Okay, be careful here because it's really dark after the uh, daylight. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get better, but your eyes just need to get used to it. We entered the exhibition, the captured house. Uh, the project uh, devoted to um, the war in Ukraine um, by the eyes of Ukrainian artists. We want also to talk about the war not only as the uh, something that happened on the 10th, 24th of February, but um, the kind of difficult relationship with Russia that had been there like forever. What we see here is actually the um, video. We're not watching it from the beginning, but it starts with the yeah, nice cities of Bucha and Erpin. Uh, it's a city just very close to Kiev, uh, nice places uh, where people build their houses, really like new districts uh, where people felt themselves safe and where they wanted to build their future and all of that are destroyed. Uh, this is like north, north to Kiev, um, northeast and they, like the first days of the war, they like really put their forces there so those cities were occupied for uh, almost a month and after we deoccupied them we found that kind of a destroyment that was just horrible. So we start from there like watching as it was and as it became and here we um, actually enter the city exhibition with uh, the first artwork of um, um, Mikhail Alexeyenko, the Ukrainian artist who made the artwork called Dust. You will just see it from the beginning now. He's creating his own clay portrait and then destroying it like little by little, just destroying as Russia tried to destroy Ukraine. There are many symbolic ideas in it uh, because it also can be read as destroyment of Russian people like of their identity what it's been done with the TV and the Russian propaganda here we have the piece by Bogdan Tomaszewski the artist um, which also quite symbolic piece because he has a mole bird put in the soldier back because this is what the artist had to do they had to you know take with themselves what they you know they work and they left their studios. They cannot stay there anymore because it's dangerous for most of them. So they have to pack their like their whole career in, in the bag and to take it with them. I will show you like probably you can walk around and see more by yourself, but I will show you just several pieces that can give you an idea of what is going on. Uh, so this is the musical artist Simonenka and he is, well, this is a techno that he combines with the president presentations at the uh, United Nations and different public speeches that he did for the last time. You probably cannot understand it in Ukrainian, but you can still feel the atmosphere, so I welcome you in. really gives you you know this strong feeling and a lot of energy you feel in it and at the same time it's like endless hole where you you, ca you can't see the end of it so you like I believe that this like this music this musical piece uh, sound piece is here really to like to help you to feel the atmosphere you know to feel that uh, like the heart beating and then you know, you, you kind of feel more deep the rest of the pieces. Here we have just abstract art uh, of cheese. It's um, street art, actually, a street artist who's also working with um, 
uh, 3D a lot now and I believe this room is also by itself very interesting uh, in terms of, um, uh, you know, the uh, texture and um, like the lighting. Uh, and then we have the Ukrainian ornament uh, as the, you know, design in the whole room. The classical ornament that turns, you know, to be like kind of also reminding the weapon or something like that. Here we go and um, we have two pieces. Uh, the artwork by Alexandra Kavalyova, just down there. It's a new documentation of the performance when Sasha went to Donbass to dig this soil, the Donbass soil. She's from, she's herself from, from Crimea, so she has her personal story. Uh, and um, she went on eight months uh, pregnancy to Donbass to dig the soil, to send it down by post to Kiev to make a performance. But it was just in November, so by the time she got the soil to, like, to Kiev, she get she had to give birth to a baby and then the war started immediately so she didn't really have the time and um, here we have another piece by Gavlin Tsinkovsky the art also the great street artist um, from Kharkiv who had really a lot and I hope there are still there some of his artworks uh, on the buildings and this is also an anticipation work because it was made in 2017 uh, you know as a reflection to what was going on in Donbass because people was you know uh, protecting their uh, windows windows like in uh, in the houses or in just some shops you know so here we have this you know, anticipation artworks, I might say, that like, because artists were talking about it all the time. It's, it's not like the war was a surprise for someone because the war was there for us, but it was there like for eight years. Uh, and before that, constantly the Russia war was attacking Ukrainians because they just, you know, want to destroy the country, the identity. They say that we are, from one side a part of Russia, we are not an independent country, and from the other side they hate us. So this is a very controversial, you know, idea of, you know, their neighbors, because we don't really care about them, we just want to live our lives. But it's interesting that they really want to destroy identity, and at the same time they appro appropriate Ukrainian identity a lot, and you will see some pieces on that topic later on. Um, and we are in bunker, we are in the underground, and it's also important to understand why, because here we um, um, like show how the people live in Ukraine, really, many people who left there, some of them, you know, had to leave the country, but some decided or had to be there, and they're living in the circumstances like that, because uh, it's like, they stay in metro and they stay in under, like really in um, just uh, some shelters, some bunkers, mostly all the time. And we will see that also. How could you access uh, this bunker? You said it wasn't in use for 40 years. It, it, it wasn't, but then the uh, Alexander Kuryugir, the cultural director of Altimunse, they like cleaned it and they really did a great job. And there was one exhibition just before us. So it was just waiting for us, <laughs> prepared. Yeah. yeah. So here we have the piece uh, by um, Avsenikova. Uh, she's um, uh, well. She's a photographer by herself, but she also made a sound design. And here we can we can hear the the, the voices, and these are the voices of the line of people um, coming for humanitarian uh, aid. And it's usually like 200 people a day in the line. And while they are there, waiting like half day until they get the aid, they talk. So we can hear them talking. Here. Yeah. Um, and here we come uh, 
uh, to the room with Aleftina Kahidze, one of my favorite artists, because she's really, um, you know, going to the edge with her expressions, and she's she's been very like smart and ironical about the war. And there are just a few pieces uh, we want, I want you to show you, like. Um, like this one, very simple, yeah, that Russian culture, it, like it goes together with the Russian war. And it's a very big discourse now uh, in like European society as well, because this is what like been happening for many years, because Russia was appropriating Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian artists like Malevich, Alexander Exter, um, they've been talking all the time about them as a Russian artist, which they are not. So, and this is this been happening for many, like uh, Repin, also another famous artist who's also not Russian. So it's been like a, a, a huge dialogue about that because um, Ukraine has its own culture and identity and it needs to be known. And now when we are talking about the Russian art, we really need to think through what does it mean because when you go to uh, Europe, uh, European Museum, for example, to Centre Pompidou, and you m m meet there an artwork of Sonia Delaunay, which is great avant-garde artist, and then you see there that she's like Russian Empire, born in Russian Empire. What does it mean? Because nobody is born in like British Empire. Yeah, nobody say that anymore. And nobody is like born in the French Empire, yeah, or German. No, no, you're born in Germany, or you born, and Sonia Delaunay was born in Ukraine, and uh, so it's been a part of European discourse because Russia was pushing it for many, many years. But there are no empires anymore, so we need to be honest with each other. Yeah, who is who? So that kind of piece. Then we have another beautiful piece, also about culture, actually. Yeah, so we have Dostoevsky, Tolstoy. Brodsky, yeah, and so it like showing again that it comes all together with the Russian aggression. And then you have, you see the ballads like skirt there, very nice. And then of course we have the gas question, <laughs> the issue, the issue with the gas. As a citizen, I want our government to stop Russian gas completely immediately. We are uh, hitting our houses with Ukrainian blood right now. Yeah, so actually, this is what what is going on in Germany right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I, I suggest you just to read every piece because it's interesting, it's ironic, it's uh, very sad. This became uh, the main image uh, for the exhibition. Bucha, well, this is actually where we had the like the, the most destroyments and uh, rapes and all, you know, uh, killed people and that. And this is an artist, and she lives just like 50 minutes by car from Bucha, the same direction from Kiev, and it's like an hour drive from Kiev. So I believe that this is very strong, and that's why it is there. Then we have another interesting artist. Which is um, Masha Shubina. Masha uh, was stuck in her village, which is in, uh, like also 100 kilometers from Kiev, by another another side. And um, she has a very nice Ukrainian, you know, like Ukrainian traditional house, a, an old-fashioned house, which she decorates with the Ukrainian stuff, and it's really beautiful. And so she had a lot of that um, napkins and towels and. Suddenly, she found herself that she doesn't have any more materials to actually to create their, her artwork. And then at the same time, she found these uh, beautiful designs in her house. And she um, and, and then she had the news in front of her. So she just started to create the, um, the, the, the weapons on top of that very beautiful classical, of like they're probably 100 years old servants. And then we have... Um, um, Yuri Bolsa, an artist who came uh, to hit his grandmother uh, during the war because it was dangerous in the city he lived in. And uh, that was actually the place where he spent his childhood. So he found his toys there. 
and um, out of his toys there was, you know, like the boy play, the boys play, they had some um, soldiers, plastic soldiers, some, you know, pictures from the children's magazines or fairy tales. And this was the only materials he had around as well as Masha Shubina that I told you just now. So he created his sculptures from them. He usually worked with more like bigger materials, bigger scale. Um, but here he had just this. So he started to create from what is around. And this is really scary. And then we also, we are here in the room is, which is made by a uh, German artist and we just left the piece here and I believe it works well together. Here we have Vlada Ralko. Unfortunately there is some work to be done, but we have the original pieces. We have just, you know, bigger pieces there, but I believe we can concentrate on this one because this is like good enough to, to understand the work. Um, she mainly worked with an aggression team and here we come to another block of the exhibition which called Aggression. Um, and uh, here we show how the artists reflect, you know, to, to, to what they saw. And Vlada Ralko is mainly working with the defragmentation of the body, with the, um, with the idea of the birth and death, and actually the birth of death in this case. And uh, we can see here, you know, a lot of like sexual objects from one side, but from the other side they are um, also about the evil which is raping, you know, um, um, another body. And so it's scary. Yeah, and we see here the symbols of USSR, the bombs, then like the symbol of, um, you know, the Russian, they have the eagle with two hats, we have it there, also some USSR symbol, and then the, you know, vagina again, with the birth of something, you know, some evil out of it. So it is like kind of the birth and the destroyment at the same time, very scary ugly, you know, impossible to look at for a long time, but at the same time, this is how she feels inside, having around all that, you know, um, all, all that death, death and rapes and all that. So, yeah. And here we come to this aggression room where we started, and we have a beautiful piece of Alexei Sai, uh, the artist who actually ironically uh, does the image of um, uh, Swan Lake, like multiplying the small lake, and of course put uh, like put the Putin on top of that as the idea of how he should actually die. You know how how it should be done because they have uh, again this idea of a great Russian culture that they like promote all over the world as being something really important and now we have like Russian artists and cultural worker, workers who say they are not there they are like they are against the war but they were there for eight years while we had this war and they say nothing so here we again show that the Russian culture doesn't go without Russian war. Uh, this is um, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Rai, uh, the artist who actually shows the symbol that you all probably know already, the Z symbol and then the V symbol and all together it's called uh, Zov and Zov can be translated as uh, the call, the call for action, or the call like you are a zombie and you have to follow for something. And interestingly, that the artist when he started his work, he was like uh, in Kherson, 
and now Kherson is occupied by Russia so he's now in occupied territory and we don't even know if he's able to get out some time but he continue working and here we have a piece of um, Yulia Belaeva from the classical um, painting the, called the Bedin and there is like the, the, the um, protagonist lady standing in front in that position but then she makes this art, her art portrait and she's standing on the Putin's head and from there we move to something more um, positive I would believe to the um, the fearless of Ukrainians as a nation for people who stay there who decided that they want to fight because everybody was expecting us just to give up and say okay guys take us we don't want the war we don't want the war but we are in the war because we fight for freedom and here we have two pieces one of them is um, uh, broken window uh, by Daniel Galkin and this is actually you know the transparent the like Russian uh, uses our uh, flag so it came from that time and people would go there with the flag for like these days on the May 9th because they celebrate the war and like the next day and uh, and he converted them you know into the medical beds like where you hand people who are injured. Then we have a piece of the, a performance actually that uh, is, it will start at seven if you would like to stay, a uh, piece by Dasha Kalsova. She's creating a head of children who are, who've been dead, who've been killed by Russians. They're made out of clay and she will create as many pieces as children will be dead by the time the exhibition will end. And she's there every day at seven o'clock in the evening, making more and more heads. And the idea of it is to make a ritual for the dead because mainly all of them are unknown, unfortunately. And we know just the quantity, but she's like not just counting, but she's making, you know, given a part of herself to each of that sculpture each of that life. Here we have Kinder Album, the uh, artist from Lviv, who I personally uh, like very much because, well, she is tough, but at the same time it's true and she also, she's been like kind of documenting what she saw and felt. Of course there are many lives that are matter and the same as the lives of animals. I mean, Ukrainian, as we found out, we didn't know, but uh, like mostly everyone has a cat or a dog or any, anything else. And I mean, it's been done a huge volunteer work to take out those animals from the zoos, from the farms, from the houses, because somebody left the, you know, the, their animals and thousands and thousands of people took them with them like out me i also took my cat out and um so it's very dramatic yeah and at the same time has a lot of hope because it's a lot of like you know humanity in it because people even being in danger they take care not just about themselves but you know about somebody who cannot take care of themselves this is amazing and then we have here another performance artist, Alexandra Krylikovska, and she made kind of a double image. She creates her own body portrait, and then she puts that portrait on top of the destroyment. She's vanishing it as the Russia tries to vanish Ukraine from the map of the world. So there are some names of the Ukrainian cities, and she's just vanishing them. to show you another image uh, of hope uh, because we really need like we need symbols and we need 
you know, some nice stories to happen, and they happen uh, even in the war. There was a destroyment. I think it was in Baradyanka, actually, the one who was really destroyed hardly. So there was a fully destroyed house, and there was a part of the kitchen left. It was like five, fifth floor or something. And then we had uh, the peacock who survived. And this is traditional Ukrainian ceramic from Lviv. They had a great ceramic fabric down there. So that became a symbol of, you know, the survivement and the, the power, uh, you know, and um, so here it is. Is that the original one? It's one of them. They're, 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 I mean, this is not the one which is here, but uh, it happened to be that um, one of my colleagues just bought it recently, and it's not easy to find. But it's like, it's really Ukrainian ceramic, very traditional one, and uh, it's amazing that uh, we have such a symbol. And here we come to the last room. The last room, which is less artistic, uh, in a way, and more documentary. And we want it to, it to be like that, because we don't want any metaphors on there anymore. We want to show things as they are. And here we really show how people live in the bunkers and the metro stations and the parking spaces. So, and also we have some original pieces, you know, like a battery, like a heating, um, that's been actually burned out together with the houses. These pieces come from Irpin, and they are, they arrived just like five days ago, so just a week ago they were in Kiev. This is Mariupol. This is um, it is a hospital that been destroyed, just like in the first days. This is just a sport. It's very dark, but it's supposed to be like that because it is very dark. We believe like that. Uh, it's just you know the sport club, very, probably also in the underground. Some of the pieces you have they are really like. Uh, low, uncomfortable to view, so you need to sit down to read the story or to see the image and they are dark, so probably you need some more light to see that, but it's supposed to be like that because we want people really to feel how, you know, Ukrainians have to live and um, it's also uncomfortable, dark, cold, it's like that. And we end this exhibition with the door with the door from Irpin. This is a beautiful story of a man who actually um, dismantled it for me from his own house, the house that nothing left from. It was totally burned out and the door is something that survives because it's, you know, yeah, because it's metal and this is it. So he survived with himself, his wife and two of his dog t uh, dogs and they walked like 30 kilometers to Kiev because there was no transportation. Uh, but they were there until the end, almost, um, the until the, the occupation on the 21st of uh, March. And when I asked him to give me the door, <laughs> he said that, yeah, I, I want people really to see what is going on here. We want, you know, they, them to know. So we end this exhibition with the door because we want you to walk out through the door because you're walking out back to your normal life and Ukrainian cannot do that. But at the same time, like you, you're walking out with some ideas of what is going on, and hopefully with um, the um, decision to act, to be more active, to talk more about Ukraine, to be more politically active, and to push your government really to be more engaged to stop this awful war.